Good morning and welcome to our service here at the Potter's House Church Hornsby. We're going to sing some songs of praise and worship as we always do on a Sunday morning. Join us. Don't let us do all the heavy lifting. You help us sing. sing that song Jesus Messiah and after this song let's praise God together let's worship him in this place So amazing. 
want to take time this morning to pray. What an amazing, changing world we live in at the moment. I want to pray that God would help us as we emerge out of the restrictions with the COVID-19 virus, that God would give us wisdom as a church to progress, to continue to do His will, that God would help you and your brethren this morning to continue to serve God and to help us to emerge out from uh, what we've been going through, to be back in the house of God, for God to help us uh, to reach others. Let's begin to pray for this service this morning, for God to help us even now and to speak to us because I believe he wants to do that he wants to help you this morning that is the heart of God let's tap into that if you have a need this morning a need of healing you're in physical pain if you have a spiritual need or some other need this morning this is the perfect time bring it to God believe God and God's going to help you. Let's pray. Father God, we t take dominion right now. We pray for your blessing upon this service, Lord, this morning. I pray for your hand of favour upon the Hornsby Church, Lord God, as we emerge out of these restrictions, Lord God. Bless our church with favour. God, protect everyone's health, Lord God, and help us, I pray, to be on fire for you. Help us, Lord God, not to take a backward step, but to take a forward step in serving you. Bless our church, Lord God. Bless our people. And I pray, God, you'd help us uh, as a congregation to do your will. Bless the service this morning. Speak to hearts, meet needs, Lord God, and minister through your word, Lord God. I pray save souls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, thank you for joining us and we appreciate you being part of our service this morning. Just want to remind you that we have details about our church online at www.pottershousehornsby.com. Also want to let you know that as uh, the government has announced that restrictions are being lifted on churches and up to 50 people can meet, our church normally runs around about 45 to 55 people, depending on the service. And so what we're going to be doing as of next Sunday Sunday week, we're going to have church uh, services back in the building. We're going to organise the building so that it's uh, COVID, uh, it meets COVID restrictions and we can meet together. And that's going to be a blessing. This Wednesday, uh, even though we could meet in the building, we're going to hold off till Sunday. We're going to make it a special day to gather back together. It's going to be exciting. And so this Wednesday, we're going to have service online once again. We're going to have our Zoom meeting, continue on in the Bible study series, uh, how to understand the Bible. And that's been a helpful study. I uh, encourage you to join us on Wednesday. There'll be details on our website of how you can join that Zoom meeting and contribute to that study. Be praying for next Sunday. Let's believe God for a tremendous day uh, as we gather together. It's going to be a great celebration to see each other, to worship live. It's going to be great to preach to real people and not a camera lens. It's been a blessing that we've been able to meet online. I appreciate that. But I'm so excited, so pumped that we're going to be together again next Sunday. Be believing God for that. And we're going to look forward to that together. We're going to take an offering this morning. I want to read to you 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, a man called Jabez. Now Jabez was more honourable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. There are several things in this scripture I just want to point out very quickly this morning. First is that Jabez was honourable and because he was honourable, he wanted to be a blessing and he prayed for God's blessing on his life so that he could be a blessing to others. And the Bible says God answered his prayer. God granted him his request. I want to say this morning there are people in our church, that's your heart. You're honourable people and you desire to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. You're faithful to bring your tithes and offerings into the house of God. You're faithful to honour God with your tithes and to bless the kingdom of God with your pledges. I just want to commend you for that. And I want to encourage you to continue to, to do that, to be a blessing to the kingdom of God right now. As we take the offering, there are online details you can give over, over your internet phone connection, given to the kingdom of God, be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Let's pray right now. Father God, I thank you for faithful saints who are faithful to bring tithes and offerings into the house of God. 
Bless them, Lord God. And I pray, God, increase and enlarge their boundaries, Lord God. Bless their influence for your kingdom. Bless their lives, Lord God. And I pray, bless the church, Lord God, that we might be enlarged and might impact our community for Jesus Christ. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for giving this morning. God bless you as you do that. I want to preach uh, from Exodus chapter 30. I'm going to look at verse 1 to 6 in just a moment. One of the outcomes of the recent technology of 3D printers, and these 3D printers, what they are is they can print 3D objects, as the name suggests, is that you can get someone to make a little figurine of yourself. What happens is you send in a few pictures or you go into a studio, you pose at a few different angles, and the printer does the rest. It takes those uh, images, it creates a 3D image uh, in its software, and through that it prints out a 3D figurine. And in fact, you can get them painted and everything. There's actually stores you can go into. They'll do this for you. And you can have a mini figurine of yourself. Put it on your mantelpiece and admire your miniature self whenever you want to. There's something about figurines. There's something about statues. One of the things about dictators is that they love making statues of themselves. At the height of his power, communist leader Joseph Stalin literally commissioned hundreds of statues of himself. The biggest statue was 15 metres high. That's seven and a half dans stacked on each other, a statue of yourself. My point in saying all of that is that God never told us to, to build a statue of him. He never told us to make an image. In fact, uh, when David said, uh, King David said, I want to build a temple for God. God says, I never asked for that. It's great that it's in your heart, but I never asked you to build me that. I never asked for that kind of thing. What God did want his people to build was a massive tent called the Tabernacle of Meeting. And the centerpiece of the tabernacle of meeting was the altar. Because God is not interested in self-aggrandizement. He's not interested in statues or pictures or anything like that. He's interested in meeting with us. And that's the power of the altar is that we get to meet with God. I want to preach a sermon called Amazed by the Altar because I am amazed by the altar. I'm amazed to this day by the fact that God wants to meet with us. He wants to meet with you this morning. And one of the ways he meets with us is through the altar. Let's read Exodus chapter 30, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, You shall make an altar to burn incense on, and you shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its width. It shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be of one piece with it, and you shall overlay its top, its sides all around, and its horns with pure gold. And you shall make for it a moulding of gold all around. Two gold rings you shall make for it under the moulding on both its sides. You shall place them on its two sides, and they will be holders for the poles with which to bear it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you, shall put them, and you shall put it before the veil that is before the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Let's talk about being amazed by the altar. I want to look first of all at God's request. Every year, billionaire Warren Buffett auctions off a lunch date with him. You can uh, bid on this lunch date and it's a, a charity event and people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars each year for the privilege, for the opportunity to sit down and have lunch with Warren Buffett. Maybe they'll get a stock tip and uh, see some income as a result of that lunch date. But from the beginning, God demonstrates that he wants to have more than a lunch date with us. God demonstrates that he wants to meet with us. And one of the key ways that he wants to meet with us is he wants to meet with us at the altar. In Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 and 21, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. And then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. 
although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Noah makes a sacrifice on the altar, and God finds the sacrifice a soothing aroma. Just the setting of this, most of you know it's the post-flood event. Man has caused God a lot of anguish, culminating in the flood. And righteous Noah and his family are preserved in that event. And I am certain that God wanted a lot more people on the ark than just Noah and his family. But the people of Noah's generation rejected his preaching and rejected the vessel of deliverance. So it's just Noah and his family that survived that event. And at the climax of that event, the floodwaters recede. Noah builds an altar and he, uh, he survived this. And he's so grateful that God has done this, that he makes this altar with God. And God is pleased by that. Because God would rather meet us at the altar than meet with us in a place of judgment. He would rather display mercy than judgment. And God spoke to Noah at the altar. He made promises to Noah at the altar. He says, despite the evil in men's hearts, I will not curse the ground again. I will not destroy And it's at the altar that God reveals that he is for us, that he is not against us, that he wants to bless, that he doesn't want to curse. Blessing in the word of God is promised to those who would simply obey, who would simply say yes to God and not no to God. Can you learn that this morning? Can you understand the simplicity of attracting the blessing of God upon your life of Breaking the curse off your life is simply beginning to say yes to God and no longer resisting him. I encourage you to read Deuteronomy 28 in your own time. God says in that chapter, I want to overrun your life with blessing. I want blessing to overtake you in every aspect of your life. And he says, if you'll do these simple things, if you'll walk in my ways, if you'll listen to my voice, if you'll obey my word, if you'll respond correctly to life, and if you'll respond correctly to my word, the blessing will overtake you. That is the heart of God. That is what God reveals at the altar with Noah. And in our text, God says, I want the altar to be a key part of your worship. I want the altar to be a key part of our meeting place together. As we know, the physical principles of the Old Testament translate to the spiritual principles of the New Testament. The point being is that God still wants to meet with us. God still wants to meet with you. There are some church signs that are perennially popular and one of them is if God seems far away guess who moved does God seem far away to you this morning it's a good sign to contemplate isn't it who moved in Psalms 145 verse 18 it says the Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth God is not far. God is near as you begin to call. And that's why he says, establish an altar, establish a meeting place. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Are there mysteries in your life? Are there some things that are causing you to scratch your head? God, why is this happening to me? Why is my family going through this? Why am I not seeing the the promises that you have, have brought to my life? Why am I not experiencing the life that I read about in the Word of God? The Bible says God wants to meet with you and talk to you about that and reveal things that are hidden to you that are only revealed when you meet with Him, when you call upon Him. Hebrews 1 verse 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets and in these last days has spoken to us by His Son. God wants to speak to you. God wants to reveal things to you. The phrase, 
Thus says the Lord appears in the Bible more than 500 times because God has something to say. You're listening this morning to this message because God wants to speak to you. You understand this morning if you're saved, if you've been serving God for any length of time, that God can speak to you even, even via YouTube. Even via online preaching, we've just enjoyed a, 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 a Pioneer Shepherd seminar. We have these every year here in Sydney. The pastors get together, they hear good preaching, uh, and they're challenged personally, they're refreshed personally. This year we couldn't gather together physically, and so we watched online, just uh, small groups of us together, watched services online as Pastor Walsh, Pastor Greg Mitchell, uh, Pastor Munzone, and uh, 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 Pastor Huang preached. And uh, it, was, it, it was incredible to me, just the challenge, the refreshing, the hope, the encouragement, the sermon ideas that came uh, Via the internet, the Spirit of God that was present in those meetings, despite all the technology that was between us and all the restrictions that were in place, God wants to speak to you today. There's a thus saith the Lord for you. God still wants us to build altars. And not altars of acacia wood gilded with gold in the inner court of the temple, but he wants us to have some sacred meeting places in our lives. God wants you to stop and consider and come and come with a right heart and hear from him. He wants us to have a place where we can sacrifice self and surrender to him and experience forgiveness and reconciliation where he can begin to remove curses from our lives we can begin to answer the questions that we ask. We can begin to bring hope where there was none. We can begin to, begin to bring healing and miracles. We can lift the curse and bring a blessing. God still wants that today. And if you've been saved any length of time, you've probably responded to many altar calls. You've responded and made many altars. God doesn't want you to stop doing that. Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 and 13 the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. It must not be extinguished. Every morning the priest is to add wood to the fire, arrange the burnt offering on it, and burn the fat portions of the peace offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continually. It must not be extinguished. How is your personal altar this morning with you and God? Is the fire still burning? Is it still a place where you can come and meet with him? Is there uh, an ongoing altar in your life because there's an ongoing need? There is a place where you need to regularly come and meet with God and don't let the fire of the altar be extinguished in your heart. When that fire grows cold, when that altar is no longer there, something terrible goes missing in the Christian's life. We have altar calls in our church services. And I just want to challenge you as we begin to prepare to gather together once again for church uh, beginning next Sunday, that you treat the, the, the altar with reverence, that you would understand how important it is and that you would understand what a blessing it is and that you would never take it for granted. God's request is build an altar. I want you to build this. I want you to prepare it. And I want you to come and I want to meet with you at that place. I want to talk to you secondly this morning about God's requirement. Every year, tourists from around the world travel to Krakow in Poland. I'm sure I said that wrong. My wife is in this little tiny audience this morning. Oh, she's giving me the thumbs up. They travel to Krakow in Poland to visit St. Mary's Church and see its famous altar. It's the, it's the, it's the biggest altar in the world. It's handcrafted. It features life-sized carvings of Mary laced with gold embedded in the back of this uh, Gothic cathedral. And uh, I, I congratulate the Krakow Tourism Commission uh, that they have this altar uh, that they attract tourists with, but that altar has no value with God. And you know why? Because God didn't ask for that kind of altar. He's not interested in some ornate 
decoration in a Gothic cathedral where tourists come and take pictures. He's not interested in life-size carvings of cherubs or anything else like that on some altar somewhere. That's not what God asks for. And in our text, he does get specific about what kind of altar he wants built. Because the altar is not just a tourist attraction. It's not just an artistic expression. In our text, there are measures that are given. There's specific wood that is used. There is a precious metal that has to be used. There is a, a crafting, a craftsmanship, all to God's specifications. God has a very specific way of building an altar and approaching an altar. There's an old skit about a Sydney Olympic Committee organising a contractor to build the 100 metre track for the 2000 Olympics. And the problem was, is when they gathered together and asked the contractor how it went, he says, yeah, it went fine, I built the track. And they said, how long is the track? It's, he says, it's a 100 metre track. He says, and they ask him, well, how long did you make the track? He says, about 100 metres. And they say, what? And he says, about 100 metres. And what they have discovered is that this track, it's meant to be a 100 metre track, but it's about 100 metres. It's actually about 95 metres. And Brian, the Olympic Committee assistant, was able to break the world record for the 100 metre dash because the track was not built to specifications. And God is interested in specifics. In Exodus 27, verse 1, You shall make an altar of acacia wood, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and the altar shall be square, and its height shall be three cubits. And God says to Moses, This is, a, this is to be set up in a specific way. You are to approach this with a certain understanding, and then I will meet with you. And my point this morning is that there are specifics that God wants to deal with you about. He wants to meet with you. But there are specific things he's dealing with you about. Uh, and if you ignore those, if you think you can just bypass those uh, and get a free pass, it doesn't work that way. God says, I want to meet you at the altar, but you have to approach the altar in a certain way. You need to come humbly to the altar. Don't come to the altar expecting to tell God why you're upset with him, what he needs to start doing better. Don't come to the altar telling God how he's dropped the ball. You need to come to the altar many times with repentance. A lot of times in the preaching, if your heart is open to the word of God, God by his Holy Spirit is able to bring conviction about specific areas of our lives. He's dealing with us about, not because he's angry with us, he wants to help us. He wants to remove that, that element from our lives that's harmful and hurtful and hindering. And he wants to set us free. But from our perspective, it requires repentance, a willingness to, to turn away from that and turn to God and say yes to him. Come, come humbly, come with repentance and come with reverence. Because God is touching lives at the altar. God is changing lives at the altar. God is redeeming broken lives. He is literally hauling people from the coals of hell at the altar into the hope of heaven. And you need to approach the altar in a certain way. Some people think, well, I never get anything from the word of God, from church services, from the altar. I pray and nothing happens. One of the most troubling scriptures I read in the Bible is about King Saul. In 1 Samuel 28, verse 6 from the New Living Translation, it says, He asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by the prophets. In that scripture, Saul has found himself in a tight spot. He's facing an overwhelming enemy. He's the king of the nation. He is, he's to lead the people. This situation is beyond his capacity to deal with and he desperately wants help. And he turns to God and he asks God, I need you to help me. I need answers from you. And it's like the other side of the phone line is dead. Saul is going through religious motions, but nothing is happening. I find it disturbing. The Lord refused to answer him. But if you understand the story of King Saul, Saul had stopped approaching God properly years before. 
Saul had actually set him up, set himself up as an adversary against the things of God. He'd set himself up against as an adversary against David. He'd even executed God's priests that he suspected of housing the fugitive David. Now he's in a hot spot and he decides to dust off his Bible and, uh, you know, get on his knees and go through the religious motions and, and it's, it's all just going to be the way it's always been. But it's not. Because God says the altar is built to a specification. There are requirements. There is expectation. God wants to meet with you. But Saul failed to properly prepare the altar of his heart. God's not a waiter. He's not going to respond. So let me ask you the question, how do you approach the altar? Because at least three times a week we get the opportunity to come to the altar. Hopefully more. You have your own private altars between you and God. What you receive at the altar depends on some very specific demands from God. We approach through the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. We come to the altar through a living sacrifice. And God, Jesus Christ, but also our own lives. Our own lives are laid on an altar. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God says build an altar. I want you to build an altar. I want to meet with you, but build it to a specification. There are requirements that as you would meet with me, it wouldn't just be any way you please. Thank God that when we meet those requirements, when we come humbly, reverently, when we come with a repentant heart, willing to forsake sin, when we come responding with obedience to God, the altar is a place where there's a powerful exchange. We come with broken lives many times to the altar, don't we? We come with broken hearts. We come with our issues and we say, God, this is what I've got to bring to the altar. We come with our inadequacies. We come with our failures sometimes. We come with our problems and we exchange them. And God gives us forgiveness and God gives us hope and God gives us imputed righteousness. We're made right with God. God gives, God drops into our hearts uh, strategies of how we can begin to turn life around, how we can begin to turn our situation around. We come with questions. We receive answers at the altar. We come with pain. We receive comfort at the altar. We receive healing at the altar. The altar is made with precious materials, beautiful materials, with craftsmanship, because it's a precious place. We should value the altar. We should value the fact that in our church services, every time we talk with God, we can make an altar we need to retain an appreciation and an amazement that God would allow us to come to the altar. There's a third point this morning, and that's God's response at the altar. I've had many experiences at the altar. God has dealt with me and uh, changed things about my heart and revolutionized my life. But I was talking to Pastor Munz, and he told me a story that really, uh, I think, illustrates this final point. He went to the altar as a disciple. He wasn't a pastor at the time. And he prayed, God, help me to be a blessing. Like we talked about with Jay Bears at the beginning of the service. And uh, I've prayed that as well. I believe many people have prayed that. And uh, what's interesting about Pastor Man's own story is that as he's at the altar, God spoke to him and says, I am going to bless you. You want to be a blessing? I'm going to bless you. And Pastor Man's own says, I got very excited about that. But in the very next moment, God speaks to him and says, and I want you to give away your car. Pastor Moe says, I wasn't so excited about that. He said, after much wrestling, I did what God told me to do. And I'm so glad that I did because you always feel better saying yes to God. And today, Pastor Moe's own is blessed. 
he discovered a truth at the altar. And that is that things die at the altar. Things die at the altar. The reality is, is that many times you have to die to self. Many times there's an attitude that needs to be killed at the altar. Where we need to bring a sacrifice to the altar. And it might be sacrifice of self-will. It might be saying no to self and yes to God. No to our own plans that we might enter into God's greater plan for our lives. But the altar is also a place where blessing is released. The altar is a place where transformation takes place. And God himself responds at the altar. He speaks to us. He's helping us throughout the day. But people have been delivered at the altar. People have had supernatural encounters. People have been changed. They've come to the altar one person. They've left another, a different person. The person that God wants them to be. And God will speak to you at the altar. And God will challenge you at the altar. And sometimes he'll say things to you you don't want to hear. But it's exactly what you need to hear. It was at the altar that God spoke to Noah and released a blessing. It was at the altar that God spoke to Abram and says, I'm going to bless you. And you're going to be a, a multitude of nations. And you're going to be a father of nations. And I'm going to give you a destiny and, and reveal promises to him. It was at the altar, as David says, I want to build a house for God. And God speaks to him about his future. In 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 26, it says, David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. And then in 1 Chronicles 22, David begins to speak to his son Solomon and recite how God spoke to him at the altar and says in 1 Chronicles 22 verses 10 and 11, He shall build a house for my name and he shall be my son. I will be his father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and may you prosper and build the house of the Lord your God as he has said to you. Here David is sharing with his son Solomon what God spoke to him at the altar, how there were there was going to be release of, of destiny, how the Messiah was going to come through their lineage, how Solomon was going to build a house to the Lord, a glorious thing, the, the glorious purpose of his life. And the challenge as we begin to bring it to a close this morning is that you need to build altars in your life. You're online this morning, you're watching from home, but you can build an altar at the conclusion of this service, you can take what God has spoken to you about and the things that God has been speaking to you about. And this sermon perhaps is the, is the touch point of where God says, I want you to bring all that stuff to the altar where we can begin to deal through it, work through it, process it. Right now, online, at home, you can begin to pray about that, make an altar in church. At the conclusion of every service, we have an altar call. And we call people who aren't right with God to come to the altar and get right with God and make heaven their home. We're going to do that this morning. But we also challenge saints, believers, because our lives can be so tumultuous, <laughs> troubled. And God can challenge us and change us at the altar. The point is that you need to make an effort to make an altar. God says to Moses, I'm not going to build this for you. You build it. Build the altar and build it specifically. Come out of your comfort zone. Respond to the urging of God. Some people don't respond to altar calls because they're too proud. Too proud. God deals with them. Sometimes the preacher will get up and say, if God is dealing with you, every head is bowed, every eye is closed, you're a Christian, but God is dealing with you, you'd respond by lifting your hand. And people won't do it because they're too proud. I don't want to lift my hand. Why? Do you think the preacher cares? He cares for your soul. He just, God is looking for a response. That you would be triggered to come to the altar. Some people are too proud. Jacob built an altar to God at Bethel. 
And it's at that place in Bethel where God reveals a ladder, uh, angels ascending and descending, heaven meeting earth. And, and, and Jacob says, this is nothing less than the house of God. And he builds an altar at the house of God. We build altars at the house of God. It's important to come to church uh, and not just sit through a service uh, and then drive off and eat lunch and forget all about it, but build an altar. You need to build altars in your life. And there's an expectation that you'd bring something to the altar. There are numbers of sacrifices that were made on the altar in the Old Testament. And the same is true today. There's a sacrifice of giving up sin. There's a sacrifice of giving up wrong attitudes. And giving up those things that hinder the idea of the sacrifice of surrender of self to God and the will of God. Bring a sacrifice to the altar and God will bless It'll be pleasing and he'll bless. You must always contend for the altar. One of the recurring results of Israel backsliding in the Old Testament, one of the most immediate things is that the altar immediately fell into neglect. Maybe you've been neglecting the altar. In this time of online services, maybe you haven't been responding as much as you need to. Maybe you need to revisit the requirements that God has been dealing with you about. It's like you come, you go through the motions, but nothing's happening at the altar because of the specifics that God has been dealing with you about. The attitude, the, the, the habit that you've picked up, uh, the area of disobedience, uh, the area where you're saying no to God and he, he can't bless at the altar. Time to check that. Deal with it. God wants to meet with you. God wants to help you. And the altar is a place where you can check your heart and then contend for God's blessing. And the altar is a place of exchange. God may challenge you at the altar to give up something that perhaps you didn't want to do. But as you do that, destinies are released. Lives are saved at the altar. Lives are saved for eternity at the altar. Destinies are rescued at the altar and God can touch you. The altar is not a tourist attraction. It's not a work of art. It's not some religious monument. God doesn't ask for statues. He doesn't ask for thrones. He doesn't ask us to build him some magnificent whatever. He says, build an altar. Build an altar. I want to meet with you. I'm going to take time to pray. And I want to ask you this morning if you're right with God. Because the Bible says we're sinners. And the wages of sin is death. We're not right with God. And as a result of that, the Bible says our eternal destiny is hell. There's a reality of judgment. The Bible talks about Noah as an event where judgment was poured out because people refused to respond to God's vessel of deliverance. We're sinners this morning, but God has provided a vessel of deliverance through Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the dead to give us new life. Are you right with God? You need to... Get on board the vessel of deliverance. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. He died for your sins. He rose again from the dead to give you new life. He's alive right now. And if you call out to him, he'll respond to you in a very real way. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a re relationship, a reality that you can experience. Would you like your sins forgiven? Would you like to make heaven your home? I did that more than 30 years ago. I'm so pleased with that choice. Uh, the best decision I ever made. Uh, you can make that decision right now. If you want to pray, I want to lead you in a prayer. Uh, you can receive God's forgiveness. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I admit I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I repent. And I thank you that Jesus died for me and rose again from the dead. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Help me to live for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, the Bible says in an instant of time, uh, heaven has become your home. Jesus is your Lord and Saviour, and you are right in right relationship with God. You can talk with him, and I encourage you to do that. I also encourage you to contact us. Our details are in the link below. I'd like to help you in your salvation. And so you get in contact with us. Let, know, let us know you've responded. We would love to help. And so let me challenge the saints very quickly this morning that you would have a reverence and a desire for the altar, that you would understand what it means that God wants to meet with you. I am amazed by the altar. I'm amazed what God does. 
at the altar. It's the most powerful place. It's the most po- one of the most powerful aspects of our church services. I can't wait to gather together again, but you can have an altar at any time, a meeting place between you and God. The challenge I want to bring is that you would examine your heart. Are you meeting the requirements? There are specific things that God will deal with you about that, that you need to deal with at the altar so that God can release what he wants to release in your life. And if you resist that, you won't experience what I'm talking about. But if you do, if you let that thing die at the altar, that needs to die. And you know what it is because God will deal with you about it. His word is very clear. His Holy Spirit is faithful. He can help you. If you do that, God can help you. Let's pray. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, thank you that you desire to meet with me. Help me to respond to you and the requirements you set that I might build an altar, a meeting place with you. Lord, I repent of sin. Lord, I repent of wrong attitudes. God, I surrender to you. Help me to live for you. And I pray, Father God, as I pray this prayer, let it be an altar. Meet with me. Help me in my place of need. Speak to me. Revive me and bless me and help me to revere, respect, uh, appreciate and honour the altar. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you through Jesus Christ. I have access to you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Come and join us for service again tonight at 6.30. Don't forget Wednesday night is online. Uh, We will be meeting next Sunday. It's going to be a celebration. We're going to have a great time. But before that, we're going to have a great time tonight as well. God bless you.